This is a somewhat tongue-in-cheek guide on how to write a research paper. Graduate students are rewarded for writing research papers, so are professors. But I found, as I've taught at the graduate level and been a professor and published some papers, that there are processes and procedures for writing a paper, and nobody has really laid these out in a form that's really easy to find. Everything's a little bit too serious. So this talk is going to be aimed at an audience for graduate students in science and engineering disciplines who need to write a research paper and are having trouble doing it. First of all, why should you care about writing research papers in the first place? Well, there are a couple of what I call unwritten rules. First of all, if you don't publish it, you haven't done it. Um, you need to get things out in the literature, or nobody in the world is going to care that you've done it or not. Another unwritten rule is generally the credit goes to the person who publishes first. So getting things out there in a timely manner is something your advisor is probably putting a lot of pressure on you to do. Another unwritten rule is that the people who don't submit their work for peer review overall do crappy work. No matter how painful it is, you have got to get feedback from the larger community on your work if you ever hope to advance and become anything in the sciences or engineering. Another unwritten rule that a lot of people don't realize is that the more effort and time you take writing things down in a form for others to read and understand your work, it benefits your own understanding of them. So this is really an exercise in personal development as well. Writing a paper is also the only way you're ever going to know what you did six months from now. I've done so much research in the past that I forget as soon as it's done, and I have to go back and sometimes read my own papers to figure out just what the hell I meant. Um, so it serves as a very good archive of your own work. There are also some reasons you should care less about writing a thesis or dissertation than a paper, although the thesis or dissertation is what you have to do to get your graduate degree degree and get out, um, first of all, it's a lot more work. So you really don't want to do this when you can write a paper instead. You're going to get less credit in your life for it. Sure, you'll get a degree, but the degree is not going to mean very much in the long-term view of things. And probably nobody's ever going to read it. So why put a lot of effort into it? And if you're like me, because it's something that you have to do to jump through the hoop and because it has value to yourself personally, but it's not something that's widely read, you're not going to be particularly proud of it given the effort you put into it. So let's look at the structure of the research paper. Um, generally, engineering and science research papers have structures that look something like this. Uh, first of all, you have an abstract. You introduce what the problem is and put it in context. You talk about how you solve the problem. You talk about your results. There's some sort of discussion that basically says this is what the results mean. Uh, you may have an optional section where you say thanks to Sue who worked in the lab and helped me with this experiment. And then you give a bunch of citations so other people can sort of follow the trail that you did in, in developing this understanding. Um, what these sections correspond to as far as actually doing the work is that the abstract is what you did. Uh, the introduction tells people what the problem is, methods say how you solve the problem, the results are what you found out, the discussion is what it means, the acknowledgments are who helped you, and the literature side is whose work you referred to. Ideally, you're going to do the literature review constantly whenever you're working in science. You're next going to write an introduction, then you're going to go and talk, do the experiment, you're going to get results, you're going to discuss the results, um, you're going to write up what all of this means in a very short form, and then you're going to acknowledge people. And this is sort of what all the stuff on writing papers said you should do. But that was never my experience when I was a graduate student actually trying to write a paper. What I actually did is shown by this, this actual column over here. Um, you, of course, are always reading the literature. That stays the same. But usually as a graduate student, I was in the lab or in front of a computer, and so I always wrote the methods and experiments section first. I next wrote the results because I had some data and I had to analyze it after I did my experiment. Um, then I went back and said, oh, Christ, what problem am I solving here? And had to sort of figure out and, and fill myself in on the background. And once I had that figured out, I could write the discussion because I knew what it meant. 
And then, of course, I, I summarized an abstract and last did the acknowledgments. So the ideal order of writing, the actual order of writing that you may experience are different. You may do it a different way. And the message of this slide is that is, in fact, OK. So now we're going to go through a step-by-step -step process of actually writing a research paper. And so step number zero, as you can read here, is to actually read things. You have to read enough papers to pick up the style and the tone of what a scientific paper looks like. And so you're constantly doing this. But after you've done this, the first step in actually writing a paper is to identify the story you're telling. And I cannot emphasize how critical this is to write really good quality research papers. In science and engineering, we all know that the creative part is doing the work. It's not the actual writing. But the writing is very important. Uh, we also know, because we've tried to read papers, and as my own advisor said, reading a paper for the first time is like drinking Drano, that they use a very formal and stilted writing style that's, that's not at all what you may be used to from fiction, historical novels, and the stuff you read for fun. Um, but a lot of people think, because they don't sound the same, scientific or technical writing doesn't tell a story, and that is absolutely not true. Good scientific writing absolutely has a clear plot, it has characters, it has meaning, it has a denouement. All the things that make good stories are also in scientific papers. So the first thing you should do is to write out a one-page story of what you're trying to communicate. It should be something you could read for fun. Who are your characters? What's happening? Why is it important? Tell a story, because if you don't know the story of your writing, you are going to flop in writing papers, and they're going to sound very generic like most of the papers out there. The second step, once you have the story, is turn that story into an outline. And again, this is a critical step. If you don't do this, you're going to spin your wheels, get frustrated, and waste a lot of time. So before writing any words or making any figures, make an outline. Here's some details about the outline. There should be a minimum of one outline entry per paragraph of the paper. The outline needs to tell you what you're writing about on a paragraph by paragraph level. Put your figures now in the outline in text form. Write down what the figure should communicate, what you're trying to say before you waste a lot of time dicking around on the computer making figures. The outline should tell you what you want to say and why it needs to be said. What are you trying to communicate? And refer back to your story when you're putting this outline together. Put references when you know them in your outline. If you don't, that's cool. We'll get to them eventually. Um, and never, never start actually writing until you're satisfied with your outline and your advisor looks it over and approves it. This is going to save you an absolutely immense amount of time later on. It's also going to avoid the huge problem of writing technical papers, which is sort of sitting there thinking, man, I don't know what I write, and getting writer's block. And don't underestimate how hard it is to write a good outline. This is a skill you have to learn to develop, but the work is going to be worth it and time saved later. 